Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Um, I thought I'd do a little video on, uh, I'll try and keep this short, on should you use Britpart stuff. I've seen um, quite a few posts recently, I don't I don't really do Facebook and that, but I do a bit of Instagram. Um, I don't do it for this reason really. I've seen a lot of, um, well a few posts of, of people getting hammered, getting proper bullied. Um, for using brick part parts on the Land Rovers, if you, um, I'm, I'm not saying brick parts all fantastic and all that lot because it's really not. But if you're restoring and rebuilding a Land Rover from scratch, you inevitably are going to come across brick part stuff. You, you can't avoid it. But it's choosing what you use. Um, and to rip somebody to bits for it and really push them, out, push, push them out of the Land Rover scene because they used a Brit part, part, whatever it be. Um, it's, really, it's really not fair. People have budgets. The parts you use largely depends on the budget you've got to spend. If you, it's a seal, a, any seal for um, Brit part seal, it costs you no more than a couple of quid, no matter what it's for. Sometimes pennies. You try getting a Land Rover, a genuine one. They go up to tens of pounds and, and, and beyond. So people are on low budgets when they're building, when they're restoring or maintaining a Land Rover. So uh, you, you've got to think Britpart has done more, especially if you're, you, you're driving around in an old Land Rover, whether it be a Discovery, a Defender, a Series, or, or even a Freelander. Britpart has done more for keeping your Land Rover on the road than Land Rover has. If it wasn't for Britpart, half of the half the Land Rovers that we're restoring, rebuilding, and driving today would not be on the road because the parts would just be too expensive. Yeah, they're not. It's not the quality that it used to be. But if you're on a budget, it is what it is. I do. There are certain things. I do. I refuse to use brick part force, mainly life or death parts, as I put it, brakes, um, bushes, some some bushes, some are all right, some aren't, you know, with your engine mount bushes, they, they're usually all right, but pr pr predominantly brakes and engine parts. I did uh, an engine rebuild a few months ago um, for a friend who's got one, who's got an old series that's purely off-roader. Didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. It just wanted the engine running. It never sees tarmac. This is right, just cheapest bits. Whack it all in there. So, brick part valves, brick part um, followers, um, and the following guide. I, I should have got. I should have got one. I didn't even think. The guide that you slot into the cylinder block for the roller and the follower to go up and down in wouldn't fit in the block. The valve stems were too big and wouldn't go in the um, valve guides. So yeah, the quality's not always there. If they'd have fitted, would they have lasted? Yeah, yeah. I don't see why not. Uh, but things like wheel cylinders, brake shoes, brake pads, brake calipers, brake lines, master cylinders and stuff like that. No, I don't use them. I, I tend to... Um, Delphi wheel cylinders. Um, seems to be going too big at the minute. But fuel filter. This was one of the things that the guy was getting stick on. Fuel filter, it's a couple of pounds. Now, Bear Mac ones aren't that much more expensive. Um, it's a couple of pounds dearer, you know what I mean? But I use Brit Park filters when I've done an engine rebuild. Um, whether it be an oil filter or fuel filter because I'll run the engine, I'll run it up to temperature, I might even take it for a drive round, take it for its MOT or whatever, bring it back because I always take the filters out and put new ones in. It will not even do a hundred mile and I'll, I'll, because quite often what I'll do as well is I'll cut them open um, to see whether there's any bits in there. Um, 
bits of swarf out the engine and stuff like that and it's a good good way of uh, like in the oil filters and stuff like that see if you've got metal bits chafing and falling apart and getting stuck in there so yeah i, I use them for that purpose i'll um and then i'll swap it out for a quality one but things like, like that that's a brick part well no actually that's an old one in a brick part bag use brick part one why not what arms it going to do it's 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 part of the spring hanger i actually thought that was a new one in there but it's, it's not going to do any harm it's a solid bit of steel whether you're using a genuine Land Rover one or a Britpark one, that is not going to break. So save yourself some money. And I always, yeah, the, the Britpark, any, any, if there's any paint on them or anything like that, it's not going to last. But I always repaint them anyway. But as for seals and stuff like that, just get the best you can afford bearings. I don't, I don't use Britpark bearings. Um, I have in the past. Uh, but only if a customer requests the cheaper bearings. But usually the bear mag ones or whatever. Um, Turner Engineering, they're not that much more expensive. Genuine Land Rover, stupid. Stupidly expensive. And it's like this, this is... Um, this is a cover kit for the swivel balls. Whether you're using... I can't remember seeing any of them mate then uh, you can get rubber ones which are about 40 pound a pop it's not gonna what's what, what's the worst that's gonna happen if you use a brick part one of these the worst that's gonna happen is it'll fall apart after a year but I fitted a pair of these to a Land Rover three years ago no four years ago sorry and they're still like brand new So, uh, my main point is, oh, that's actually, I'll, I'll mention that. This is the bypass holes, or apparently the bypass holes, that comes off the water pump. And it's a bare mag part, so you're not always getting the, the, the it's a genuine bare mag part. Don't fit. It's too small, it's too short. It's about an inch too short. Bare mag. Just because you pay more doesn't always mean you're getting better quality. But the main point of it is, the main point of this video is stop giving people grief because they're on a budget and all they can afford is brick part. It's as simple as that. People can't always afford to go for the best quality stuff and it's keeping a lot, another Land Rover on the road that, uh, that would get scrapped because they can't afford to repair it. So, yeah, just bear in mind, I try not to use, try to use real quality bearings, brakes, engine parts. Everything else, you know, exhaust, what have you, it's, it's not life or death if it's, if it only lasts you a couple of years. It's, 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 it's not life or death, is it? Worst case scenario, you've got to spend another 60 quid on an exhaust in three years' time. But, yeah. Right, I think that was it. I think that's me rant over. I'm sorry, it really touched the nerve with me that, that somebody was... Um, it, it, weren't just, it, it weren't just one person getting it. Everybody was jumping on them, jumping on them, jumping on them. But you can guarantee they're going to go and work on their Land Rover at the weekend. And they're going to go and fit a brick part part on the Land Rover. Unless they're rich, which currently not many of us are. Yeah. So, right, rant over. I'm going to get back to work, get some stuff done. Thanks for watching as always. Uh, yeah, don't forget like, subscribe, do all the usual YouTube stuff. Right, see you soon.